So this one's from Matthew Wiggum. Do you think that the practice of reflection as a tool for improving one's coaching is sufficiently developed in the current coaching system? It's a good question. My, my instant thought is that I've been qualified for 22 years and have the Master Performance Qualification and have various other qualifications uh, through Bolletieres, PTR, RPT, all these kind of things. And there has not been one of those qualifications that has required or used, needed to have any tool to make me reflect. So my reflection ability doesn't require a tool to make me reflect. The, the, the business of reflection is massively important to help people become more self-aware and, and develop and so on. Um, so my, my kind of instant thought is that you're either a reflector or you're, you're not, you know, or you're somewhere in between. And whether it's somebody gives you a piece of paper and says, right, go reflect on what's either just happened or your journey on the course and so on, or whether it's a fancy tool on an online resource or a, an iPad or whatever, it wouldn't make any difference to me, uh, but I, I do see the value in reflection. So I, I don't know if that actually answers the question. Like in the courses we do, you have an online diary for level three, four, and five now. The level three, they have to do like module feedback and, and so on. I would say that in general, you have to prompt them, a lot of people to do that. Whereas the, some others, it's like war and peace. So that kind of backs up what I've said already. Some people are more naturally into it than others. Um, the people that are not into it, you know, it's trying to sell them the benefits of being self-reflective rather than how fancy the tool is. So that, that for me, is more important than the technology we use or the, the tools. In the senior performance, again, it's, there is an actual uh, diary that they have to keep, like a reflective log. So that's, uh, but again, the quality of that is only going to be reflected in how much they like reflecting, you know. So, uh, I don't know if I've answered that, but I, th I don't. My gut is that it doesn't require technology and fancy tools, and, and it's certainly not fancy formats, if you like. It's just selling the idea that if you are not comfortable reflecting, then you should get comfortable being uncomfortable, because it's a massive thing. It's it's almost like the fuel that makes you develop you know to be comfortable making mistakes and learn from them and so on and reflect on them and so on so I, I see it's massively important but I don't see it uh, as an area that we need to change dramatically on the courses. Question from John Wolger. With the success that the Germans and Czechs have had at football and tennis would it be worth using the same methods? Um, this morning I was speaking to the coaches about um, having a British identity and what, what that might look like. Now this is just my opinion, so it's not coming from any the governing body at all. But my thought is, as Britain's such a diverse country now, with so many different cultures in it, that to have one method that fits all is borderline impossible. But what I do think could work in this country is for us to be quite smart with our approach. I think it would suit our, a lot of, certainly a lot of tennis people's kind of natures to think that we were doing things really clever. So, you know, this morning we're talking about the integrated approach to footwork. So, the, to just say, right, we're going to copy the Spanish drills, for example, just winds me up no end because this validation that it's better because you put the word Spanish in front of it just kills me. But equally, if you said, we're going to do some British footwork drills, that just sounds as cheesy as saying Spanish. So we should just, we have to try and get comfortable and proud of what we're going to do. So, and I think it does suit our nature to be a little bit clever with it. So it's going to be right, not going to just do footwork, you're going to be working on the tactical side, the technical side, the mental side, as well as the physical, you know, movements and so on. 
uh, that suits us, you know, to actually think, right, we're going to make tactically the smartest players on the planet. I think a lot of people would be like, yeah, let's go for that. Uh, we are, like, I don't think technically we've got massive issues because most coaches like technique. Um, you know, they have to be, I would say, much more biomechanical savvy rather than aesthetically pleasing, you know what I mean? So, but to copy, to outright copy another country, I just think it instantly, it, it would get my back up straight away. Um, and as far as, I don't know how much success German's tennis is having, uh, obviously the, the recent football results would suggest, but I heard on the radio again, the FAA, or they should just copy the German model. So that number one, we're not in Germany. Number two, we're not Germans. Uh, we're British. Uh, we're, we live in Britain. We've got certain uh, cultural considerations, weather considerations, facility considerations that we have to make something that's specific to us. So I, no matter what, I think I mentioned earlier on in the video, copying is maybe one initial way of learning something, but then you have to make it your own. So I, I think that would be the way I would go, is make something specific to us, make it smart so that we actually feel pride in delivering it. And one day, imagine one day, uh, say, it even sounds crazy saying it, but imagine one day a Spanish coach saying, yeah, but today we're gonna do the British way. You know, at the moment it doesn't happen, but I, I don't see any reason, uh, there's no logical reason why it can't happen. Well, Chris, thank you for your time today. And if you've one final message for the coaches out there, what would that be? My advice to any coach is always the same. It's to find someone that you respect and know that you can learn from and make, make it happen that you're going to work with them, learn from them. Uh, if you can, try and collaborate with them from a business sense. I think we're stronger together than we are apart. Uh, it would be to kind of park the ego at the door and just get on with it and always remember that everything we do, I said this morning again, we have a duty of care to our players and it's all about the players. So find good people to work with. Uh, if you can actually try and have some sort of business relationship with them so that it means that you're working in collaboration uh, and always remember that everything that you do is revolving around not just the tennis development of the person you're working with but the play, the kind of personal development of that person as well. That's brilliant, thank you very much indeed. My pleasure, thank you. Have you seen the way the lightning strikes and burns